Hey, welcome fellow steam enthusiasts. And today uh, for your viewing pleasure is a sort of breakdown of a number 210 train direct return trap, which uh, has a patent date of January something. I think it's an eight, but I'm not sure. 1918. Again, I'm not sure about that last digit because the casting was a little iffy. And we're going to be going on, we've got some documentation here. This is a train specialties catalog, uh, bulletin V260. I think this is from the 30s, starting to come apart. And there is a picture of the internal workings of our direct return trap. And we have some documentation on it here. So you can uh, read the text for yourself. I'm not going to read it out for you. There is the mechanism and how it's supposed to work is tied on to a coal-fired boiler and uh, two check valves at the bottom on the return. Let's see, do we have any? There's the rough in dimensions. And it might have been installed, or return traps might have been installed in these various government buildings. Um, the Supreme Court building was built between 1932 and 1935, and so that's what dates this catalog that we have here. So this side would have been connected to uh, just, pat, uh, just at the boiler steam supply side or vapor supply side, and this would have been vented into the um, dry return, which would have been for the air or any steam to, to escape. So let's take a closer look. This nut comes apart. Typical spud nut. <clears throat> We'll take a closer look at this piece of piping here. Um, I've taken apart a couple of these and I've never seen that green before or since. I think something really bad happened in so uh, with the water. There you see a very interesting green color. And the other thing which is not mentioned in the literature as far as I can tell is there's a restrictor um, in the spud built in. See if we can get a better shot of that. Yeah, there's a hole right at the bottom there with that very strange um, dark uh, green color. I'm not sure what caused that. So this is, the, again, the steam side. So there would have been bolts here on the top, which had been removed. So we're going to take this apart. So you break the seal. And here's your float ball, which they say is spun, spun brass copper. They got springs at the bottom and the top. There's your cast iron container. Um, this would have been attached to the bottom of the wet return between the two check valves. And these are 3H National Pipe Thread tappings if you want to install a, a sight glass gauge. And I think that's the number 405, which I think is a casting number. I'm not sure. All right. Clunk. So let's take another close look at the mechanism here. Now this is where the steam entered. Now I had to chip away whatever that green stuff was. It was sort of a calcified very odd color, and that's the um, the seal uh, preventing the steam from entering the the uh, re return trap. And here's a close up 
of the mechanism. Let's see if we can orient it as how it would be seen. So as the, if the pressure increases in the system beyond a certain limit, it would rise up in this container and the float ball would rise up and contact the bottom here and this very clever trip mechanism would open up the top seal there and as it drops it would close so there you see it opening letting the steam in equalizing the pressure and allowing the the water to return back to the boiler so this is essentially a condensate return pump driven by steam or vapor to um, allow the water to flow back into the boiler. This is what's connected to that. So this would rise up, let the steam in, and still, and the water would then drop. A water level would drop as it was being pumped into the boiler. And then this mechanism would allow the pressure to dissipate back into the uh, dry return until the thermostat was satisfied. Thank you very much for allowing me to show this to you. I hope this was uh, useful and um, another in the series of uh, uh, steam heating oddities. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Be well and stay safe.